he told me that he was a bandit. So a man who gives you love every day tells you he's a bandit. It's difficult to judge him. Pablo Escobar, El Chapo, El Mayo. These are notorious kingpins that left an empire as well as a world of pain and bloodshed behind them. But what about their children? Did they continue their legacy? Can a criminal be a model to his son? The most famous cartel kingpins grew up in extreme poverty. It was the catalyst for their lust for power and money. But their children grew up rich, surrounded by piles of cash. How did this impact their involvement in the narcotics trade? Let's explore the lives of the most notorious drug lords, children. This is Vicente Zambada Niebla. Vicente is the son of El Mayo, real name Ismael Zambada. El Mayo took over the Sinaloa cartel after the demise of El Chapo, and to this day, he is a wanted man. It's even thought that El Mayo threw El Chapo under the bus so that he could rule the Sinaloa cartel. So he is a truly ruthless and feared kingpin. What about his son though? Vicente knew little outside of violence and ruthlessness. So in his eyes, his dad was the real deal. He wanted to be just like him. Of course, El Mayo groomed him from day one. As his eldest son, he would inherit his blood empire. So Vincent learned to coordinate shipments and conduct sketchy deals using violence when necessary. Kingpins become kingpins because they don't take no for an answer, and their lust for power and blood overrules common sense. But Vicente never knew the hardships of being poor or living on the run. He was out in the open, living a lavish lifestyle and exposing his riches to the media. So in 2009, he was arrested on Mexican soil. He was extradited to the US and pled guilty to several narcotic shipments as well as ordering assassinations. From prison, he cooperated with the DEA, offering them names and specifics about the Sinaloa cartel in exchange for a reduced sentence. He was one of the main voices who testified against El Chapo. He is now serving a 15-year sentence and has returned $1 billion from his drug profits as part of his plea agreement. Indeed, El Mayo didn't just have one child. This is Serafin Zambada. Although younger than Vicente, El Mayo never sheltered him from the violence of criminal life. From a very young age, Serafin was introduced in the ins and outs of running a cartel. It seems like El Mayo was a great role model for his son, no matter his cruelty. So Serafin became an active part of the Sinaloa cartel from his teenage years. But the cartel is a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and even fathers don't protect their sons in this case. El Mayo remained free while Serafin was arrested and tried for the many crimes of the Sinaloa cartel. In 2014, Serafin was extradited to the United States after being arrested on a warrant in Arizona. There, he pled guilty to conspiracy to bring over 100 kilograms of white powder and one ton of pot into the US. He returned a quarter million dollars to the government from his narcotics profit. He was sentenced to five and a half years in prison, but not before he apologized for his behavior. In this drug business, one hurts a lot of people. And I, Your Honor, regret having been the cause of causing so much damage to many people with the drug business. Here's where it gets interesting. El Chapo, or Joaquin Guzman, didn't just lead the notorious Sinaloa cartel. He also had at least 10 children. That's right, the bloody El Chapo was a family man. Now, he lives in a maximum security prison in the United States. He will never walk out again. So who's in charge of the Sinaloa cartel now? El Mayo, who is a wanted man with a $5 million reward on his head, or El Chapo's trusted sons? They are known as Los Chapitos, the four most trusted sons of the world's most notorious drug kingpin. According to the DEA, it's these four sons that rule the cartel and are in charge of the largest white powder and amphetamine distribution network between Central America and the U.S. And Ivan is El Chapo's eldest son, and he's been in charge of transporting white powder to the U.S. and collecting the profits, moving them back to Mexico. But it's not all peaceful transactions. Just like his father, Ivan also uses violence to exterminate rival cartels. In 2019, he led a bloody rescue of his half-brother, Ovidio, from Culiacan, Mexico. Ovidio had been arrested by Mexican police, but Ivan couldn't bear it, so he sent a whole army of sicarios to his rescue. Needless to say, people were killed. Ivan's top priority is protecting his family. His little brother, Edgar, was only 22 when he was killed in a parking lot. Sadly, 
This is the price families of cartel kingpins sometimes have to pay. As of today, there's a $5 million reward for information leading to Yvonne's capture, so he really followed in his father's footsteps. Jesus Alfredo Guzman was born on May 17, 1986. This makes him three years younger than his brother Ivan. Much like Ivan, Jesus is on the DEA's top 10 most wanted fugitives list. He's been engaged in trafficking, bribing officials, gun trade, and ordering assassinations and kidnappings. Pretty much all the list of crimes when it comes to cartels. He's one of the cartel's mad dogs, but he's also the brains of the operations. After El Chapo's arrest in 2016, Jesus expanded Sinaloa's operations by building several labs and increasing transportation routes. Jesus and Ivan aren't the only Guzman kids that won a chunk of their father's crime empire. Ovidio and Joaquin, his younger sons, are also wanted for crimes against the U.S. They have their own narcotics transportation company, and Ovidio oversees trafficking all the way to Australia too. So Los Chapitos, El Chapo's four oldest sons, are wanted for trafficking, murder, kidnapping, money laundering, and just about a dozen other charges. Luckily, the rest of El Chapo's kids seem to be keeping out of trouble. His eldest child, Alejandria, is now a fashion designer in Mexico and stays out of the cartel business. Still, she has had a very privileged life, all thanks to her father's blood money. I mean, just look at her mansion. She doesn't seem remorseful about the source of her money, and she even defends her dad online. I'm beautiful because of my mother, intelligent because of my father, and a murderer because of me. El Chapo's youngest children, twin daughters Imali and Maria, were born in August 2011. They live a happy and peaceful life with their mother, El Chapo's fourth wife, Emma, in California. Then, of course, there's Pablo Escobar's son, Sebastian, aka Juan Pablo. To everyone else, Escobar was a feared drug lord. At the peak of his criminal career, he made $140 million in cash every day. He also butchered everyone who stood in his way. Sometimes, he even murdered the families of judges and police officers who opposed him. But to Sebastian, Pablo was a loving father. I was willing to give my life for him. That's how deeply I loved him. Juan Pablo Escobar was born on February 24, 1977, right around the time Escobar had become one of the richest men in the world. But believe it or not, Juan Pablo had no idea just how ruthless and violent his father was until very late in his teenage years, because Pablo did all he could to shelter him and make him see his point of view. When I was seven years old, he told me after he killed the minister, and when we went to Panama, he, he told me that he was a bandit. So a man who gives you love every day tells you he's a bandit, it's difficult to judge him. Indeed, there's a lot of mixed messages here. But there was another problem. For Pablo, violence wasn't bad. He never once expressed remorse for his hundreds of murders and thousands of crimes. And I don't think he expressed any regret at all. About anything? About anything. He thought he was doing the right thing. Whoever your parents are, they're the ones who teach you about the world from their perspective. If they teach you murder is okay, you might begin to think that too. But luckily for Juan Pablo, he never entered his father's world. He was only 16 years old in 1993 when Pablo Escobar fell to his death on the rooftop of his aunt's Medellin house after his famous last encounter with the DEA. Only then did Juan Pablo realize the full extent of Escobar's horrific crimes. His first reaction was to threaten to kill those who killed his father. But he didn't really mean those words. He'd never laid a finger on anyone and wasn't going to start now. He was going to protect himself and his family. In that moment, did you want to kill everyone? Yeah, in that moment, yes. The 10 first minutes, yes. And that's why 10 minutes uh, after that, I call the press and I tell that I will never do anything uh, to continue my father's steps. And that's the second threat, peace. And that's the only one that I've been uh, living every day since then. As soon as Escobar was taken down, Juan Pablo, his sister Manuela, and their mother Maria lost all their assets to rival cartels. When they tried to flee from Colombia, 
no one would sell them plane tickets. United Nations didn't want to help the Escobars either. That's when they charged their families and fled to Argentina. Now, they were the Marroquin family, and Juan Pablo took the name Sebastian. We changed our identities, it was the only way. When we changed our, our names, the next day we were free. But it was no easy feat for the Marroquins. Sebastian was arrested for money laundering, kidnapping, and blackmailing. He'd done none of these. He was just being arrested for being his father's son. He also lived in poverty, something he'd never experienced before, and something Pablo was desperate to run away from. But it was exactly because of Pablo Escobar that his son lived on the run and in poverty. This is what happens when you make money out of a crime. Slowly, Sebastian got back on his feet. He became an architect and a lecturer. Now he spreads the word about living in Pablo Escobar's shadow and about his father's crimes. He warns people not to idolize him. Before he was a famous kingpin, he was a ruthless criminal. How many murders is he directly or indirectly responsible for? Well, there is not uh, an official record of that, but I believe that it is almost about 3,000 people. There's one last person to talk about, Pablo Escobar's daughter, Manuela. Manuela was born on May 25, 1984. She was only nine when Escobar was arrested and killed by the DEA. But by then, she was already aware of the havoc caused by her father's cartel. A rival gang had attempted to take the family's lives with a bomb. It left Manuela deaf in her left ear. So while she got a million presents every year, Manuela was used to constantly being afraid and on the run from authorities as well as rival cartels. Still, she is the only member of the Escobar family who has never been arrested or accused of any crime. When the Escobar family changed their names to Marroquin, Manuela took the name Juana. In 1999, Sebastian and Maria were arrested for Pablo Escobar's crimes. Although they were soon released, this sent Juana into extreme bouts of anxiety and depression. Would she ever have a normal life? Or would she pay for her father's sins forever? Sadly, Manuela has even tried to take her own life. She lives with her brother for her own health and safety. Just one example of kingpin children whose lives will forever be affected by their father's greed. Hey, thanks for watching. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. See you next time.